lights, camera, action. Okay. You're watching Food is Medicine TV, where we help you heal from the root cause. And we all go out to dinner, we all eat out, and so we are going to talk about the seven pitfalls of eating out and how to avoid them with my dear friend, Chris Buchanan. Welcome. Thank you for having me. It's awesome to be reunited yes. with you uh, on TV like this. So Chris is awesome, and we've been friends for years, I don't know how many, five, six, seven, twelve. <laughs> <laughs> a long time. Yeah. Um, and I have so much respect for Chris. She runs the Good Anya Organic Cafe here in our hometown of Encinitas. It is the healthiest restaurant that you will ever eat at. I am talking about your golden milk lattes, your pasture-raised collagen, you get bone broth, and it's amazing. And she has been in the restaurant business for nearly 20 years, so she is truly the best person to talk about the pitfalls. She knows all the behind-the-scenes stuff, so that's what we're going to talk about today. All right. Lay it on us, Chris. What's the first pitfall that we need to look out for when we're out to eat? Well, let's, I would say the first pitfall actually is I, the oil. I think yeah, it's the oil. Yeah, there's a lot of order, but the I oil think it's for the sure. Oil. Because no matter how good of something you buy, a $40 filet mignon, mm -hmm. you know, a big nice piece of fish, even if it's wild, they're going to be frying it up usually in a canola soy oil blend. Yeah, so yeah. you get this, even if you're buying healthy <laughs> organic food, you're kind of ruining it. There's yeah. no such thing as a canola. We shouldn't be having these GMO oils that are pro-inflammatory and driving up our cellular toxicity. So I would say the vast majority, I mean, I've heard, you tell me if this is true, restaurants need to maintain like a 28% food budget. And the oil is where you really, if you use good quality oils, you, you can't, it's hard to stay within that. I mean, I don't know yeah. how do you. Yeah, I mean, these oils are almost free. You know, yeah. they're so, <laughs> so they break cheap. it down per dish, they're practical, they're pennies. Yeah. So they buy them in five gallon buckets, so they're often very rancid and old. Yeah. And it's in everything. Do you hear that? It's five gallon buckets, rancid and old. Yeah, like That's, a big paint yeah. bucket, paint big. Buckets. Okay, so how I get around that is I will say order grilled, baked, broiled stuff, or I say I have severe food sensitivities. We we're talking about we're that person at the restaurant. Can you do my food in butter or olive oil? What yeah. do you think about? That's exactly what I do. I mean, mm -hmm. if they're gonna really heat it and grill it, I don't do olive oil. I ask for butter. Mm -hmm. I mean, chances are good. Yeah. it's gonna be factory farm butter, but at least it's not. Mm -hmm. you it's know, one step up for this. It is one step up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so talk about the newest labeling. I wanted to give you the newest um, nationwide regulations on trans fats. Well, they've been trying this for about 10 years, actually. Yeah, um, New York let the charge, right? Yeah, and I think then California, but it's, we got a letter maybe four years ago from the San Diego County Health Department mm -hmm. that said all hydrogenated oils need to be out of your restaurant. Yes. And then in about two months, we got a letter that said, you have five years to do it. Oh. So it's, they're not out by yeah. any means. People are trying. The mm -hmm. FDA has now, doesn't regard them as safe. So mm -hmm. they're non-grass. Mm -hmm. And they pretty much let anything <laughs> have that designation. Mm -hmm. So they're even admitting that they're not safe. But they're still everywhere in every restaurant. So we can expect within five years, so by 2026, that we're not going to have trans fats in our food as a nation? No because it doesn't, it doesn't apply to packaged foods. And if you have less than um, 0.5 grams, you can still say zero on your package. Okay. So like we have always been preaching all these years, you have to read the ingredients. Yeah. And you absolutely just don't want anything with hydrogenated, partially hydrogenated oils or any soy or canola oil or corn oil. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah, you can't you can't get away with being, you know, without being your own health advocate and being informed. But there's a lot of us out there that are, sh you know, showing products and we're, we're the vetting system for you. Um, Chris has the healthiest, this is new, healthiest electrolyte powder I have ever come across. It's my now new number one favorite because your tagline is every ingredient matters, to your point of reading it. Yeah. So um, let's talk about water for a second. It's it's, I hate that this is so doom and gloom, but you need to know about it. And so let's talk about tap water. And we all get water when we go out to the restaurants. Yeah, I don't get water, tap uh -huh. water. I order mineral water, you mm -hmm. know, try to get like a Pellegrino or something. Mm -hmm. um, at home, I get spring water delivered. Yes. I think it's, it's an elitist thing sometimes people think, but it is really a very important part of health. 
and anyone can go on your local water board wherever you get your water from and look up the reports mm -hmm. and there's certain chemical levels that are allowed in water um, and they'll tell you, okay, you're at this level and it's great. Oh, these ones are over, but it's still in it. So it's over the allowable. That's an action item from this show. Mm -hmm. Go wherever you're getting your water and look and see, get informed what is in your water so you know what to drink and what not to drink and how to protect yourself from maybe getting whole house filters for the shower as well. I have them in my whole house installed yeah, and through through every faucet. Um, we had uh, Dr. Joe Pizzorno on the show a few years ago. He's the founder of Bastyr University, mm -hmm. kind of led the NAFRA naturopathic chart, you know, 50 years ago. And his newest book is called The Toxin Solution, and now we're showing how arsenic is just rampant through so yeah. much of our tap water in the U.S., and you just want to make sure you're not consuming that. Um, okay, and then what about, you know, this one is big. This one is huge, and it's de it's actually destroying our water, because yeah. the next one's factory farmed meats and farmed fish. So we want to go grass-fed, pasture-raised, wild for the seafood, and you know all the yeah. factory farms kind of causing the problems with the water too. One way I save money in a restaurant is I kind of go more plant-based and mm -hmm. eat. And instead of spending $40 there, I'll spend that money at home and I'll buy the really good stuff at home and yeah. eat out because um, I don't want to spend that much money on something that's toxic or support that industry. Right. And I would say that the majority of restaurants have um, factory farm meat and fish. It's just... Oh, that's um, true. The vast majority. I mean, you, majority you, we're there. all in a different... You know, we all here, our tribe, we're seeking that out. And if, if there are these wild and grass-fed options, we're finding them within mm -hmm. our cities. But... Yeah, it's still something to, to look into and especially at home, like definitely allocate your budget to the meat and to the fish and if you can't find it or it's too expensive locally or it's obscure, we love ButcherBox. They ship nationwide in the U.S. for pasture-raised meats and they're very reasonably priced as is Vital Choice Seafood. You can get all the wild fish you want delivered frozen to your house and then to Chris's point, choose more plant-based if you know the restaurant you're going to doesn't have a top quality animal protein. Yeah, and I, I would also say, I mean, the, the consumers change everything and it's mm -hmm. people like you that are educating the consumer. So ask, ask this, I mean, I know it sounds kind of silly, but ask to speak to the manager and instead of going on Yelp and complaining about some nonsense, you know, try to make a difference, yeah. write to the owner, write to the information thing on their website and say, you know, we would be willing to pay for this. They always blame it on the consumer. They don't want to pay for it and it's not true. Some people genuinely can't afford it, but yeah. if we just kind of default to that answer, we're never going to have any changes. Speak up. Yeah. yeah I think up. if we can all speak up, even it just, it doesn't have to be every time you go out, but once or twice. And yeah. I speak up at a local restaurant in Cardiff because they have great rotisserie chicken and, you know, veggies, but their oils are terrible. And so yeah. I'm just like, if you guys, I know the owner, I think you do too. And I'm always like, if you could change your oils, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Coffee. Yeah. Oh, one of my favorite topics. Decaf. Let's talk about the toxic decaf and what healthier choices are. Um, probably you've heard of the term Swiss water uh, mm -hmm. process. That was the first company to kind of uh, coin that phrase and it's, a, it's like a trademark one. But now there's lots of water processed coffees on the market. So mm -hmm. anything, if you buy an organic decaf, which you, if you're buying coffee, it should be organic. It's one oh, of the most yeah. highly sprayed toxic mm -hmm crops on the planet. You drink it every day. You usually put it in tear body first thing or mm -hmm. wait till 10 a.m. if you follow the adrenaline code. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you yeah. want it to be organic. Mm -hmm. And if you're, you know, a lot of people are pregnant or women that, you know, are gonna be pregnant and they switch to decaf, well, you're getting chemical solvents. Yeah. Um, really bad stuff that, that just strip out the caffeine that also strips the flavor out, which is a bummer. Mm -hmm. So the, the beauty of water is that it's a natural, totally gentle process and it gets 99.9% .9 of the caffeine out. Mm -hmm. So any um, decaf, if it's organic by definition, will be water processed. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of safe there. And the flavor's there. So people ask us all the time, oh, sorry, this is not our, this is not decaf. And I'm like, oh, no, it is. It's, it tastes that good. It just tastes that yeah, good. Yeah, because it still has the flavor. With decaf coffee, they have to re-inject the flavor back into the bean. I didn't know that. Yeah. And it's, it's just okay. it's a very processed thing. So you want to not have a lot of coffee in what you do have. You savor it and make it a... Can you make it at home, those of you hitting Starbucks on a regular basis? Yeah. Can we start making it at home? That could be an upgrade that we do that, that really helps. And it's cheaper. And then it's put some cheaper, money into better It's better things. for the environment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you know, we're taking away two of our favorite things here, coffee and wine. 
<laughs> okay, yeah. let's talk about drinks and sugary drinks and things like that. Um, yeah, one super easy way to save yourself when you go out, because we have to go out. We love going out, it's part yeah. of our social. 80-20, I always yeah. say, it's like bless it and eat it if, you, if you really want something and it's yeah. gonna add emotional value. Yeah, um, it's part and, of our society. So when I go mm -hmm. out, you know, you try to choose the less the least sugary drink as possible. Mm -hmm. So you, the most pure alcohol, my go-to drink is tequila, tequila, fresh lime, and maybe a dash of agave. Okay. Um, and nothing else, and shake it up, and that's the healthiest, skinniest margarita. Some people add soda water to that to cut it more. And any restaurant has Anyone those three ingredients, Anyone can do that. Right? If they don't have agave, um, maple syrup? they do. I don't know okay. if the bar has maple syrup. I like that yeah. idea. But they probably have simple syrup made from cane syrup cane sugar mm -hmm. you know but I'm talking a mm -hmm. teaspoon in there and it cuts it and that's mm -hmm. enough and that's enough it's, yeah 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 um, and at Chris's restaurant she carries dry farm wine which we love right this is like it's like you're making your food yourself you're not compromising anything and so we will link to we have kind of the dangers of conventional wine we've done a show on this and the benefits of natural wine and I love dry farm wine club um, I'm part of it yeah and anyone who that. these guys are out there sourcing really good wines mm -hmm. we um, at good on you we do biodynamic wines too I think yeah. part of what they source is biodynamic mm -hmm. so you know that's just the soil being regenerated with all those nutrients. I have read that one glass of wine improves your health. Mm -hmm. Two glasses, you're at even, and three, you go to negative yep. a day. So you figure out still seven glasses a week. It's a bit much mm -hmm. for me, but if it's our general rule of thumb <laughs> is you know three to five a week if you can keep your alcohol intake as part of your twenty percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 But good wine, it does not make you feel bad. No, the dry um, farm is ketogenic, it's under one gram of sugar, and we use the term dry farm because they're starving the grape, they're not irrigating it, and so therefore there's naturally less sugar, plus they're not adding it. Plus there's all these, and we, you know better than I do, these. there's not enough regulation on U.S. wine, and almost all of it's contaminated, even if it's mm -hmm. organic, and they can use things. I mean, they're adding extra sugar, they can they can put sawdust in there to make not to not age it as much, so, you, oh, it's yeah. oaky, right? So you really want to make sure you know what you're eating. There is one more pitfall to eating out that we want to discuss and that is allergens, mm. food allergens because you don't know where the cross-contamination is or what you're getting. Yeah, it's definitely hard in a restaurant. Um, mm -hmm. You know, chefs have gloves or they're washing their hands and there's towels and there's knives and it's busy but you mm -hmm. just, just tell them that you have an allergy and to take extra precautions mm -hmm. and they will. They'll change their gloves, hopefully you know, and, and if it's really, really serious, I would talk to a manager. I mean, we even tell people at Good Onion not to eat there if you have nut allergies because we have nuts everywhere. Right, good. Even though we really try our mm -hmm. hardest, and but we put a disclaimer mm -hmm. on because it's really tough. It's tough. Things fly around in the kitchen oh, like sure. crazy. But one thing I like to do because I'm gluten free, um, I try to be dairy free as well as much as possible. If I'm if I'm going to a restaurant, I look it up in advance. Mm -hmm. um, if I need to, I can usually figure out by the menu. But if I need to, I'll call ask my questions there so I'm not, you know, that person. Good. Um, but as I've aged, I could care less actually now. So I just say it at the table. But <laughs> yeah. it's a way when you're, we're all in our stages of kind of dealing with this. Yeah, and, depending on where you are in your health process and your healing process yeah, and your and, ability to speak up. And sometimes your friends will make fun of you, but you know, you get, you get better at taking that. Oh, but, um, going out to dinner with yeah. the health peeps in our community. It's yeah. like 30 minutes before we get to order. I was already going yeah. through their health. Um, I, we are coming out with, by the time this show comes out, we'll be out with it in um, Enzyme for the top seven most common oh, food allergies cool. that will break down the protein in wheat, dairy, corn, soy. So um, I always suggest and already do anyway, take an enzyme 20 minutes before eating because you don't know what, then your body will be able to break it down and instead of building inflammation. So thank you so much for being here. There you have it. Seven pitfalls of eating out and how to avoid them. We'll see you next time on Food as Medicine TV.